Hi everyone! I just wanted to start off this video by saying thank you so much for the support. I can't believe that this channel has reached 30,000 subscribers. I mean, it blows my mind. And so I just decided I want to do a little something different for you, and I hope you enjoy it. Today's video is about cannolis. Now, cannolis are these caramelized sweet little treats that are crunchy on the outside and soft and custody on the inside and usually they're traditionally baked in copper molds. Now these copper molds can be quite expensive, coming in at about maybe $20 or $30 depending on what brand it is and the size of the molds themselves. I personally could never bring myself to buy them because knowing me, I would want to buy 6 or 10 of them at once and not just one piece. Um, so that would easily set me back a couple hundred dollars. Now I did my research and I found this place in Japan that sold cannelle molds that they created themselves. This was the best seller and the examples that they have on there look beautiful as well. So knowing that I was going to go to Japan soon, I decided I had to go to that shop. And I did. I ended up traveling to Japan, got to Tokyo, went down to the kitchen street and entered the store and bought it. The store is called Majimaya if I'm not wrong, um, but I'll put it all in the description below so you can just click on the link to purchase them if you're interested. I paid 274 yen for these molds, but I noticed online they were selling it for 314 yen plus shipping, so it's a lot cheaper in store than it is online. I've only bought six because, like I said, I've never tried them before, so I wasn't sure if they're going to be a dud and I didn't want to spend too much money on them and yeah so this is me trying out these molds that I brought back from Japan just to give you a quick look at them they are made out of steel I believe and coated in a non-stick coating they're definitely lighter than your traditional dark baking trays but it's darker than your copper molds so I'm not too sure how you conduct the heat but there is a little hole on the molds as you can see it shouldn't affect the baking but I wouldn't know I'm gonna try it for cannoli batter, it's best to make them 48 hours in advance. And the first thing you're going to do is to heat up 35 grams of unsalted butter with 500 grams of milk. You want to heat it up to about 80 degrees Celsius. I cut the butter into small pieces so that they can melt a lot faster and more evenly. That way the milk doesn't start to evaporate too quickly before the butter is able to melt. Whilst that's heating up to the temperature, you want to measure out 75 grams of all-purpose flour and 50 grams of bread flour. You could use all all-purpose flour, um, but I like the mix of it and the chewiness I get from the bread flour. It's not necessary, it's just a preference. Once it gets up to 80 degrees, you just want to set it aside so it doesn't continue to heat up. You then want to beat one egg. I know this is going to be a little bit troublesome, but the recipe itself calls for 30 grams of egg and 50 grams of egg yolks, which in this case just so happened to be three egg yolks for me. Depending on the size of the eggs, you could need less or you could need more. You want to give it a good whisk to mix it all, but you're not trying to create too much bubbles, we just want it to be evenly distributed. Once the egg is all combined, you want to add 240 grams of white sugar and just give it another whisk again. Slowly pour in the hot milk. What you're trying to do is to slowly increase the temperature of the egg, but you don't want to cook the egg itself. So if you pour all of it in, what's gonna happen is that there's a high chance of you scrambling the egg. Doing it a bit at a time just slowly raises it and allows it to temper itself up to the right temperature. You want to sift in the flour. 
I sifted in the flour in three parts, but it's not necessary. You could do it in two parts, you could do it all at once. It just reduces the risk of bumps. There were still lumps in my batter, but don't worry about it because what we're going to do after this is to strain it. To flavor this, I'm using rum and vanilla bean paste. 5 grams of vanilla bean paste would be around 1 teaspoon, and I use 20 grams of rum. You could increase the amount of rum that you want in it. Um, I like 20 grams and just how it gives it a subtle, fruity flavor to it without being too overpowering. But that's up to you. You then want to strain the batter and remove all the lumps. You want to make sure that all the flour lumps and clumps that may have been left behind are incorporated back into the batter itself. So just give it a good press and mix it through and then what we do is that we strain it again just to be sure everything is smooth. This will also remove any foam that you've accidentally whipped up and we're pretty much done with the batter. We just need to let it rest and sit in the fridge for 48 hours. It could be kept for up to 4 days but after testing, baking candles at 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, 40 hours is a nice sweet spot for me. Not necessary, but just a preference. You want it to rest for at least 24 hours if you're not going to let it rest for the 48 hours. I melt some butter and brush the moulds with it, tipping out any excess. I'm just trying to get it nicely coated so the cannabis don't stick to it, but you don't want a thick coating. So traditionally, I know you use beeswax rather than melted butter, but I find melted butter does a good job. You don't want too much butter in the molds because what will happen is that as it bakes, all the butter will melt down and then the oil will rise to the top, causing it to pull. And after you bake, you'll notice that you have this hole in the middle of your cannelle once you cut into it. So just a light coating is good enough. And I noticed with these molds, they actually didn't want to take on too much of the butter a lot of it just slid off which is fine and I was quite happy with that being the case so long as it came out of the molds when it came time to tip them over and remove them. I know that this is going to be a third time for straining this, but as you can see, because the batter had rested in the fridge for two days, it forms a film on the top. So you just want to whisk it back in, mix it all up. You don't want to overwork it, but straining it would just remove any lumps that may have been created. So you then want to pour about 80 grams of the batter into each of the molds. I weigh it out, but you could just pour until you're left with a few mil from the top. Because what happens is that as the cannula cooks, it rises, and when it rises, you don't want it to pop too far out of the mold. If that happens and it pops too far out, it may rise beyond the top of the mold. When that happens, there is a high chance that the cannelle will get stuck because it's puffed off too much and stay on top and not at the base, where, or whatever you call the bottom bit, won't touch the metal. And if it doesn't touch the metal, it's not going to cook 
evenly and that's where you have that white bottom bit. You will be able to see what I mean later on. You want to be sure that before you bake the candles, your oven has been preheating at 220 degrees. I put a baking steel in there just to make sure that the temperature is high and that the base is hot when the pan goes in. You could just put a baking tray in there and let it preheat, but I use a baking steel because I have one. So then I bake the candles at 220 degrees Celsius for 18 minutes. I then turn the heat down to 180 degrees and bake it for another 45 to 50 minutes until it gets really nice and caramelized on top. You don't want it to be burnt and black, but you want it to be really, really dark. Once it gets to that color that you see on the screen, where it's like nice and dark bronze, it's ready to be removed from the oven. Now this is the first time I'm using these molds, and I'm not sure what to expect once I tip them out. Well, I noticed that these two on the top row had risen really unevenly when they went into the oven. I kind of expected that they were going to come up looking a bit odd. But in general, of the six, the other four were well coloured. This one only had a very slight pale bottom, whereas the other one, as you can see, it rose so unevenly that the top was actually slanted. So it didn't actually have contact with the molds themselves, which is why it was so pale in the middle. Now, this is what I was praying would happen, and I'm really, really glad it did. Um, it's nice and bronze, you know, the molds themselves held up really well. It unmolded really easily, just dropped out of the mold once I tipped them over. Um, there's a bit of butter left in there, so I'll just give it a good wash in soap water, let it dry out, and... Yeah, that should be it. Now as a comparison, I decided you know, I'll take out my old baking tray. That was what I was using last year. Um, I wasn't disappointed in it, but I knew what to expect because this is what happened for me last year as well when I was making a whole bunch of candles. I just kept getting that pale bottom and I wasn't really that happy. And also because of how dark the molds are, it cooked so much faster than the other one and it ended up burning the exposed area a lot faster than the rest of the actual cannelase. So you get a bit more of that burnt bitterness which I really, it went a bit too far so I didn't like that. Just looking at the colour comparison you can see the difference. So I really like all the bubbles on it because it gives me an idea of what to expect once I cut into it. And yeah. As you can see, it has a brittle outer crust that is crunchy and crisp, but the inside is still custody and soft. Um, it's not too open. I know depending on what your preference is, you could have a more open palm or you could have one that says custody as this. I prefer this, um, but it all comes down to the recipe itself. So the recipe I'm giving you today will give you this result. Now I just want to cut into the other one as well, just to show you how it looks like. It may not be pretty on the outside, but it looks fine to me on the inside. As I said, this is really a bit too dark for my liking. But, it's still delicious. This is using the same batter, but as you can tell, there's a difference in the crumb itself based off the shape of the mold, the temperature of which it cooked in. And so for the ones that were cooked in a tray, I poured 48 grams of batter into each mold. I baked them at 220 degrees for 25 minutes and at 160 degrees for 20 minutes. Just to compensate for the fact that there's less batter in it, but I still wanted to get that caramelized crust. Overall, I'm really, really happy with the results that the molds gave me and because I don't have any copper molds, I don't know how differently it actually acted against that, 
but it definitely heated up really quickly. You can see the speed of which it was bubbling because I was observing the difference between the two trays. These ones that I bought from Japan heated up a lot faster. Now, I then decided that I'd let the remaining batter rest for another 24 hours, trying to adjust the difference in the temperature and the reaction it has to the crumb. So for that one, I did it at 260 degrees for 10 minutes, and I baked it at 180 degrees for 45 minutes. That was definitely a little bit too long, but the high heat at the start helped with giving the extra boost, which gives that rise. I still prefer the original recipe that I'm giving you because that's one that I've used many times before and I definitely liked it. So in conclusion, I really really enjoyed these molds. They were a great purchase. You can buy them online. I got them for about 274 yen in store, but when I saw online it was at it was about 300 over yen. So if you include shipping, they would definitely not be quite as cheap. But for $3 compared to $30, I'd say, you know results themselves are worth it. Um, if you have anybody visiting Japan, you can get them to buy it for you. Although the last time I went there, I had to ask for stock from the back because they ran out of stock in the front of the shop. So ordering online will probably give you a better guarantee that you're gonna find it. Whereas going in store, they may run out of it and you might not be able to purchase it. I've put a link to the store below in the description box along with the recipe as per usual. And if you wanna see me experiment, behind the scenes, you can always check out my Instagram which I post every time I experiment on new recipes um, in my Insta stories and yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and, and for more videos, please click the subscribe button. Thank you so much for the support, I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!